everyone and welcome back. So I know I kind of went on a little bit of a rant earlier about design fidelity, but I just really wanted to stress that, you know, don't jump into visual design exploration too early. This is an iterative process. I mean, we are not going to create something perfect right off the bat and we're going to gradually build our way up you shouldn't necessarily just jump right into it. So what we did in the last video, we talked about navigation and we were exploring that a bit. And you could see we've started to create some hierarchy within here just with colors. I kind of already like the way we're starting to use color, you know, this yellow as more of an accent and, you know, keeping things a little monochromatic. Let's see how that may change. I also, need to start thinking about things like just typographic hierarchy. So let's jump right in and do that. So I have a grid on here. I've just kind of created my own. Let's go back and I'll just show you that. So that I have a mobile uh, style here of a grid, which is really helpful. This is just a, a standard eight column grid and I'll show you what it looks like. So it's just really standard 16 pixel gutter and a margin of 24 pixels. Just something to think about. This is what I'm using. You don't have to use that, but let's jump right in. So I'm going to start typing some stuff that we can actually use. So, you know, maybe we don't use this hello, like line in terms of like the person's name. Maybe it's something else. Like I said, it's all about visual exploration at this point. Uh, we are building that fidelity. So I have some headings here that uh, that are styles that are really, really helpful. I, I wanna stress the idea of reusability just because, you know, reinventing the wheel over and over again is so pedantic. We wanna reduce the amount of time we have to do that. So, you know, create styles, even if they are finalized. These typographic styles aren't finalized by any means. I think I still need to tweak them a bit. And you will need to as well, even with colors. I'm not settled on this palette and I'm pretty sure by the time we are at the end of this course, it's gonna probably look entirely different or I mean, there'll be some slight variations and that's just the way design is. So don't get too uh, held up on uh, those little details because things will change. It's just the nature of our craft. I mean, we learn, we build, we keep on learning and we keep on rebuilding. So uh, don't get married to anything uh, too early. What do I have here? So I have uh, some nice colors. We can start actually applying uh, colors to our typographic elements. I'm going to just switch off this grid, which I'm using control G to do that. Okay, so next thing I want to just think about is this. Let's just drag this in here. Okay, so I want to create something. Uh, I want to work on a card, and it's going to give us an idea of just general, like typographic hierarchy over here, how to display imagery, also maybe some use of iconography. First thing I want to do is let me just set some sort of baseline for how large I want this to be. So what I'm going to do is control G and I want these cards to kind of just, I want the next card to kind of fall off the edge, kind of like our uh, little wireframe here, but I'm making this card much more longer because I want the first image they see to be something that is really, really relevant to uh, what they want. So it could be like, if they're into gaming, uh, it could be like a new controller or something like that. Um, let's actually just jump in and grab an image. So I'm just gonna grab an image just to get started. So let's just type in controller. Perfect. So we have a bunch of different things here. Let's look for something that looks more like a product shot. That's a little too dark. What do we have here? So I'm just looking for just product shots. I think I selected two images accidentally, but we'll see what they are. So, okay, let's delete that one. Let's resize this one, bring it closer. So there we go, we have one and we're going to actually remove the background on one of these. So remember what I said about like just like visual exploration a while back, 
when you're using images, you don't need to just necessarily like plop them in there. You know, you can you can do different things like removing backgrounds, adding different types of like gradients to the background. So we have something interesting to play with. And I'm just gonna keep this here for now. I mean, I'm not gonna touch it. I'm actually just gonna jump right into typography. So I'm gonna take this, resize it. I don't want it to pass the width of this card. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put a price tag. So 65.99 is the price tag. And actually we can make sure that that's just the width. And we can start th thinking about just hierarchy here. So I have uh, 16 pixels, let's just select that. 16 pixels and bold, or we can even jump all the way up to 20 pixels and bold. So like we have just like the item amount and I think that's pretty crucial. I'm not sure exactly so like right here, I have the product name and the amount below, but you know, maybe it's, we can just explore with having that up there. What about if there's like a sale? So um, I think I actually have a style for that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I do. Perfect. So I have a style for that. And if there's a sale, what we're going to do is we are going to have something right beside it. Maybe it's like $79.99 and we are just going to make that a little less obvious. So we're building the hierarchy, not only through color, we are also doing it just through size and typography as well. So that's much more prominent. And there we go. These are spaced, we can space them at eight pixels. Oops. Perfect. Okay, so that looks pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate that and let's think about the product name. So this is an Xbox uh, One uh, controller. And I wanna create some hierarchy between the image, I mean, sorry, the, uh, the product name and the actual uh, product price. So Remember we talked about typography and creating that hierarchy. We can just bring it down a bit. If we wanted to, we can also just, we just bring it down. Let's see what options we have. Like we can do something like that. And you know, our main larger typographic element is the price. So that shouldn't detract from that. This is just our assumption. It could be wrong. And that's, that's just totally fine. Like I said, it's all about exploration. So we have something great here, uh, which we have, uh, I think, what do I have below? I have some lorem ipsum. Let's actually just uh, copy paste that. So that is there. And we are just going to go like body small over here. And there we go. I mean, I think we can probably afford to have two lines. So we, what I like to do is I'll just go like this. Okay. Just so we can start thinking about that content there. That's a little too, see like right now I'm realizing that maybe I don't, I have too much variation between these two colors. So um, I may need to think about that. And this may be really too thin. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to create I'm gonna create a frame. I'm starting to think right now even about just general structure. So I can just create a frame, call this price, and just start thinking about like auto layout as well. So I have a horizontal a layout. And so the great thing about this is, you know, if I start to adjust this, things are going to just adjust with it. As you can see the price moving back and forth. So that's just gonna help us speed up our workflow. I think we're missing something else here. Like maybe we can have like a 20% off tag. So actually I don't think we need this anymore right now. So let's actually create another frame and I'll show you what we can do here. So we're just gonna create a frame. We're gonna put text in this frame and we're gonna just say something like 20% off. Oops, let's go back. Oops, there we go. So we got 20% off. Perfect, I think I even have one for a pill or, yeah, there we go, perfect. This is great because, you know, using, uh, maybe 16 pixels is too big, but using styles can really, really help your workflow a lot. So I like to, you know, start thinking about all these different types of things 
earlier on. And it helps me just influence what I plan to do with uh, the just general things like typographic elements and color. Uh, if I get those kind of nailed down a little bit earlier before I jump into this, then it makes it easier to kind of iterate based off of just, you know, applying styles quickly, editing those styles, and just generally just keeping you going. So we got 100 uh, pixels. We're going to make a little pill here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make 16 pixels on the side. Uh, at the top, I'm going to, uh, let's just do zero. Let's see where that, okay. So we're going to need like an eight pixel top maybe. Um, okay. So the fill, let's think about the fill. We can do like, a, like a nice background like that. And that can be the darker. So there we go. We have a something nice coming along over here. And I'm just actually going to throw this here. Let's just uh, make sure that's like that. That's a little too small. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to command C and I'm going to select inside. And there you go. There's our little pill just letting us know, Hey, you got 20% off. This is an amazing deal. And let's, okay. We can keep that centered and I'm actually going to create the exact same thing over here. I'm going to um, select everything and make a frame and call it card details. So I'm, I'm really liking where this is going in terms of uh, my exploration. I'm going to, I'm going to just create an auto layout again. So you'll see that just moved over and that's fine. I'll show you how we're going to fix that. We're going to adjust this just to get it right. So this is going to, if we just move it, we can move it wherever we want. I'm moving it all the way to the left and you'll see it change at the top as well. So there's our kind of layout. And like, we do have a lot of contrast now with our typography, which is really great. Maybe this price is a little too large and we'll fix that. Maybe we just, uh, maybe that's too small. Uh, we'll leave it for now. Okay. So let's think about the image. I really like where we're going here. You can see like this whole thing is starting to come together in comparison. And, um, I wouldn't have really known that if I hadn't gone through different types of explorations earlier. So, uh, I want to do something interesting with the image. Like here, I'll show you what it will look like if I just kind of plop it in here. So we're going to plop this in here. And we're just going to, you know, make it the size of that rectangle. I mean, that looks pretty good. Let's, uh, let's make a copy of that. What about if we do something a little bit more interesting? How about we do something like this? Okay, so we have something and like now we can use the background any which way we want. So I'm just gonna rename this as image and I'm gonna lock this layer for now. So just, uh, you can do shift command L to lock it. So I have the image in the background and like what we can do is we can do a bunch of different things. Like we can set that like that. We can set the radius. So, I mean, we have options. Like if we want to use like a secondary color or something like that, we can. So, I mean, I, I'm kind of liking, I'm digging the way this kind of looks. It's very like unorthodox in the sense that we usually just see product images. So this may not work and that's totally fine. If I'm thinking about like development and scalability, this is probably not the route to go just because you'd have to do it for every single product image. So this makes sense, you know, just in terms of like, you, we want to release something. We don't want to go through all of our product images and do that. Maybe this is like a V2 or a version two to a version one. I'm already thinking about maybe scalability issues here but I really like the way these cards are turning out. I'm just going to delete this one for now. Actually, I don't want to delete it. I just want uh, that image there, but I'm going to delete this uh, card. I'm liking the way this image is turning out. I'm going to actually make this, I'm going to rename this to image background and I'm going to unlock this image and I'm going to group them in a frame. 
and I'm gonna call this product image. So as you can tell, like I'm already starting to create different types of cards here. I have one card built out that I really like. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go in this direction. Maybe for the other ones, I'm gonna start just inputting like, like regular images. But this is kind of what I'm thinking right now. I'm going to actually create another frame and I'm going to group this all together and call this a large card. So we're starting to already think about things like layout and um, just hierarchy and color and how we plan to use that. So as you can tell, that's how it'll look on the screen. You'll be able to swipe through that. That's it for the larger cards. In the next video, I'm gonna start working on a maybe a more interesting piece that can fit here, maybe not deals, uh, because that could be redundant. Maybe we can work on like uh, category cards or uh, something like in relation to uh, the user's interests. So that's it for this and uh, let's uh, jump into our next video.